Hello world, my name is Amelia and welcome back to my special Christmas video. Um, I just want to start off by saying Merry Christmas to everybody watching this um, and Happy Hanukkah and Kwanzaa if that's your thing too. Um, but I just want to start out by making this little video just because I did promise that there was going to be another little update video coming letting people know where I was with my life. Um, my last video that I did was my Nadine, which I ended up sending all that stuff back because after trying it all on, I was just like, okay, none of this works for me. So, anyways, into the depths of it. So, I, one of the biggest things that, because of everything that's been going on in my life, um, that I have not had any opportunity to talk about lately has been the fact that I am actually coming up on getting plastic surgery. Um, <laughs> I know it's really crazy and it's been really difficult for me because um, I've been telling myself like for the past month I'm like oh my gosh I need to talk about it, I need to make a video about it, I need to get into it because um, it's kind of funny that it is really a big, it's another one of those really big steps for a trans woman, um, for someone like me. And, and I just, I just was sitting there telling myself, I was like, I need to talk about this. I need to make a video. But I was just so overwhelmed by what was going on in my household for the last month that I finally was just like, you know, I just never got around to it. And a matter of fact, after, um, so I was actually supposed to go in to get surgery on December 16th for, and just, oh, here comes my cat. And just to, um, just to summarize what I was having done, I'm not having a full face plastic surgery done. Yes, Jesse, can I help you? My cats are needy. So I wasn't having a full face job done. Um, I was only actually getting my brow taken care of. So literally the only thing they were gonna do is basically make an incision up here on my hairline, fold this down, and they just chisel around. The okay, okay. Oh my gosh. And they just basically chisel, they basically just chisel down this section up here um, the reason that I really wanted to get it done was just so that my side profile. So if you've ever noticed in any of my videos, my cat, I tell you, I start filming and then it's just like, what? Um, I don't like turning my head. It is something that does very, very deeply. It's like the number one thing that bothers me. Because if I sit there and turn my head, um, there's this very obvious bump and there is hair going all over the place now. Yeah. And that was always something that really deeply bothered me. Um, that's why I'm definitely having this done because I just, just don't want to have to worry about this. Yeah. So the goal, this has got to be one of the first times that my cat has been this interrupting to my videos. <laughs> um, Basically, the goal is to give me more of that straight, um, if you notice, um, a female profile is definitely a much more straight profile. So, literally that, and then it opens up the orbital rims, raising up the brows and stuff like that. So, it's a pretty massive procedure, um, but I definitely opted to go that route because I got a consult back in October with a Dr. Lipka um, over at Kansas University. Um, exact same medical system that I got my bottom surgery through. It was a really big hassle for me um, because I was struggling with the idea of where do I want to go? Who do I want to go with? And I really honestly was bouncing all over the place. Like I could have gone to the top surgeon, but then it was like typically plastic surgery since you have to pay for all of this stuff up front. It can cost you anywhere from twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars money that I definitely do not have, and <laughs> um, 
you can sometimes get your insurance to pay for it when you're transgender, but it's most policies do not cover it by default. Um, there are some notable places like UPS, Amazon, um, Sal um, Ulta Beauty, um, Starbucks being the most notable where they have written FFS coverage for transgender individuals into their policies. Um, and even then, it's usually carried by a secondary policy. <laughs> so anyways, um, that was something that a lot of people were pressuring me to do, is just be like, well, why don't you make a job change to one of those places? And I'm like, I just, I'm not in a position in my life where I need to be making a job change. So, I'm going to definitely need to use my roller when I'm done here. Um... So I just decided instead what I was going to do was try to fight my current policy. And I started going on that route and then all of a sudden, shortly after that happened, I come to find out, why is your hair making my face itchy? I'm not allergic to cats. Um, it's just irritating, I guess. So I then come to find out that my work is changing our policy provider. So I literally had submitted for coverage back in like October and then it sat there and sat there and nothing happened. Then I got the rejection letter in the end of November. Typically, can you please not claw my leg? Typically you're going to get an automatic first rejection. That's how insurance companies typically do it. Right off the bat you're going to get one rejection, they're not even going to take special ink. No matter what you submit to them, they're going to automatically reject it the first time. That's their automatic pr pr procedure. No special consideration. It's just, it's not in your policy. Sorry. So it's not even until the second time that you, you might not even get a human person to review your case. So I had already gotten my first rejection letter. And I was going to um, counter, and this time I was going to counter with my psychology letter. I actually had a psychology letter written for how necessary it was. And honestly, if I got approval for reimbursement, I would have gotten everything done. Um, which I can't really say on camera right now what everything would have been. It would at the very least have been the brow and maybe a couple things down here, but my one challenge is, is that I have an underbite. And when I went in for my consult in October with Dr. Lipka, what he recommended was me to actually get my underbite fixed um, surgically. Now, because you can get braces to fix it, but the problem is, is usually even braces just really just artificially fix it. So what he was actually recommending, so I would have to get braces to basically move the teeth into their post-surgical position. And then they go in and they actually break your jaw and reposition it. Which, from what I understand, by moving the back jaw back and the top jaw forward, it would actually then give me the proper positioning and it majorly fixes where my face sits. Which, according to Dr. Lipka, he actually said, I have a lot of features that work to my advantage. They just kind of need slight adjustments. So like this is the biggest thing that it bothers me and he said it would make the biggest difference. So anyways, back to insurance. So because I found out that my policy holder was changing, um, that meant that all the work that I had been doing with my current policy provider was now null and void. It meant nothing because they don't even transfer that stuff to the new insurance company. So officially, okay, bye. Officially to come January 1st, I'm going to get transferred to Blue Cross Blue Shield and I'm going to have to completely start over. <sighs> Which actually wouldn't have been the case necessarily if it wasn't for the fact that my... Okay, here comes my other cat now. If it wasn't for the fact that my procedure got postponed. So I was supposed to get surgery on December 16th. Now you want on my lap. What is up with you guys? And they ended up um, postponing it with the whole COVID situation going on. Um, 
honestly my brain is like farting on how much I actually have said because I actually did test positive for COVID on December 1st. Um, I'm not going to get into details just because like the whole trail of symptoms and stuff like that I, and the fact that there were things scheduled. I can't even keep track of everything. Um, point being is that there was a technicality in their policies and I tried to ask for an exception. They didn't because December 16th is more than 14 days after I tested positive. My symptoms, I had no symptoms, but there was this, this weird technicality um, where the fact that I got retested and I wasn't even supposed to get retested and then they still sat to the retesting as a positive being like, oh, well, now we can't do the 16th. And I'm like, but my original positive was back on December 1st. And I, I was asking for exceptions and they just wouldn't give it to me. And I'm very, very angry at the anesthesia department for not even looking at the circumstances and just saying, well, we're sticking the policy. Um... Anyways, they ended up doing that whole ridiculous thing and they, I ended up having my procedure postponed. Well, because Dr. Lipka practices out of two different hospitals and he only work, does surgery at KU twice a month, um, that, <coughs> oh, excuse me, that ended up meaning that, that ended up meaning that, um, and then he was already fully booked for his next procedure date in December. It meant that my procedure got pushed into January, which meant even furthermore that my complete going back and forth with my current policy holder was then null and void. Meaning that because the service date was now in January, now I had to deal with Blue Cross Blue Shield. I couldn't deal with my current policy holder. Meaning, because I could have, if the if the procedure happened on December 16th, I could have con continued to fight the current fight that I was on. But because they pushed it forward, now I had to completely start over, scratch that all over again. <sighs> yeah. Um, this is the kind of stuff that ends up getting backlogged when I don't, <laughs> when there's other crazy things going. By the way... This is going to be my future office, so hopefully these kind of videos, now that I got that big major issue with my roommate taken care of, hopefully these are the kind of things that become more consistent. Anyways, before this video gets too long, so I have a procedure for January 6th right now. So in about two weeks, I am supposed to be going in for this. I'm going to be supposedly swollen right afterwards. This whole area is going to get swollen on me. It takes about a week or two for it to go down. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to the recovery. But I definitely, and I ended up, it, it was actually very very much um, a positive thing where I was able to pulling the money from. Um, it cost me $4,000 for just getting the brow taken care of, which really honestly surprised me considering that most people typically pay around 20000 to get just nose and brow done. Um, it was a debate to get my nose done, but it was like another 4000 just to do nose. And since my nose is kind of on, it's kind of in an area of, you could do it if it bothers you, I waited. So anyways, because one of the things I was doing, so as far as credentials go for Dr. Lipka, um, one of the reasons I did finally go with him is because while he doesn't have any direct experience with FFS, facial feminizing surgery, he is very experienced as a cranial plastic surgeon. Um, he has done facial reconstruction for children for about, I think he said somewhere between 10 and 20 years. Um, and also not to mention, what is on your ear? Not to mention when he was talking about fixing my um, underbite, that is something that he specializes in. So I would definitely go to him when I can finally um, work with insurance because that should be something that insurance will approve. Um, but he did have some, um, he did take a, a study course of some sort 
through Facial Team, which is a European-based um, facial feminizing group, which does give him some credibility in it. He understands it, and based on the information I received and the questions I asked, I did feel that he did have the knowledge to get me where I needed to be. And it's, it's a, again, it's kind of with the bottom surgery. There is a lot of hacks out there in this industry. I have a friend who completely got botched by one of these hacks that pass themselves off as a good surgeon and then completely destroy your face. Um, I'd probably say probably not as bad as some of the even worse people I've heard. There are literally surgeons out there that are even worse but that's a story for another time. But anyways, um, I was actually looking for a surgeon who was more on the conservative side because I doesn't I wasn't looking to get my entire face rebuilt. I was only getting I was only looking to get the really mild things that bothered me taken care of. This is a mild thing that bothers me. Um, so literally they're going to do type 3 reconstruction where they cut this out and they basically back set it and then they put a couple screws in. It's actually a very interesting procedure when you think about it. Um, again, I do feel like Dr. Lipka had the credentials to know what he was doing. And for the price, I'm putting my trust in this. And honestly, it is a lot like my bottom surgery, like Dr. Gray was a relatively new person, but I do feel that she did a pretty moderate job with everything that I, uh, she had to deal with, so. And so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. So hopefully in these upcoming videos, you'll be able to, uh, we'll get closer to this. Anyways, I am going to end this video here, um, to my two subscribers, ha ha ha, who watch my videos. Um, Merry Christmas again, and I hope your holidays are great for you. Me, I'm going to get off this video and be going to hang out with my parents, as much as, again, I don't have affirming parents in the fact that I'm transgender. It is definitely, um, it, it's definitely one of those things where I look forward to hopefully change coming with them. I mean, there are little hints and stuff like that of things getting better, but anyways, I will see you all in the next video. Do not like, do not forget to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye now.